Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. So, Darkwing Blast has been revealed for a while, and looking at the set list, the archetypes it supports keep getting wilder and wilder. Prediction Princesses, Draco Slayers, and Ninjas all came out of left field, but all of those themes felt like they had more ground to cover. Prediction Princesses have a treasure trove of odd and powerful flip monsters to choose from, Draco Slayers were once part of the most feared deck in the meta, and Ninjas had all kinds of non-warrior themed effects that a series of dedicated ninjas that weren't paywalled behind ninjutsu art cards would fit right into. In contrast, today's theme feels like it's run its course, left behind like so many other dual terminal archetypes, simply because their design space had been filled or their mantle had been taken up by a more modern theme. But Yu-Gi-Oh! is nothing if not full of surprises. So today, I bring you Naturia. Premiering in the July 2010 side set Hidden Arsenal 2, these residents of the Sacred Forest are peaceful woodland critters who find themselves on the receiving end of the worm's aggression when they invade the dual terminal world. However, these creatures aren't born warriors, and instead use their home territory against their invaders. And this manifests in the game as the Naturia being a control deck, punishing your opponent for taking a variety of actions that go against the will of the Great Forest. However, while some of these monsters would go down in history as the most powerful cards ever printed, the theme more often than not landed on the other side of the spectrum, being full of ineffective and forgettable effects that didn't have any meaningful impact on competitive play, a byproduct of them trying to have some kind of counterplay to everything, and almost none of it being relevant. But with some new releases in Darkwing Blast, we may yet see a resurgence of these children of Mother Nature even if it does mean playing only a fraction of their entire roster. So, to prepare for their imminent arrival, let's stroll through the woods and take in our surroundings, see how the many plants and animals form this complex ecosystem, then see if we know any friends who might like this forest. It's time to navigate the matchup with Naturia. But before we continue, a quick reminder to please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed my content so far. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and there's no better way to get there than on our Duel Runners. Our next stop is 40k, which means Leo and Luna Explained, where we'll be covering Ancient Fairy Dragon's Companions, the Power Tool Dragons, Morphtronics, and any other cards that are more than meets the eye. We've also got our Discord, where Professor Layton finally snapped. I also have a Twitch where you can join me for viewer duels, progression pulls pulls, and chaos draft pulls for the foreseeable future. And don't forget about my Patreon, where you can gain access to my videos early, reach some of these milestones, as well as helping to determine which videos I make. Thank you all so much for watching, and now, back to the video. So, what's the deal with Naturia? Well, it's a series of Earth attribute monsters spanning a variety of types. Plants, rocks, beasts, insects, Anything that can be nature-themed, you can be sure it's part of the Naturia. And as stated previously, our goal is to run a control deck that punishes our opponent by reciprocating with some kind of effect. And once our opponent is worn out, we swarm all over them with our little beasties. Let's start with the main deck monsters, going in level order, which means Naturia Cherries is up first. It's a level 1 plant tuner monster with 200 attack and defense, and if this card is sent from the field to the grave because of your opponent, you can special summon up to 2 Naturia Cherries from your deck in face down defense position. Cherries made for a neat floating blocker, doubling your defenses when removed from the field by any means belonging to your opponent, and being tuners meant that you could pair them up with a variety of monsters for just as diverse a synchro pool. So when playing this deck, having access to such resilient tuners is definitely the cherry on top. Naturia Ladybug is a level 1 insect monster with 100 attack and defense, and when you synchro summon a Naturia monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And during your main phase, you can tribute this card, then target a Naturia monster you control, and it gains 1000 attack until the end of this turn. So as it was originally intended, I think, it gives a nice temporary bonus to your synchros to help them get over monsters that would otherwise be too big though it can also be used in more niche scenarios to boost up any other Naturia. Nowadays, though, it's far more likely to see play as free material for a summon. Ladybug easily converts to Link Haribo, though to be honest, there's easier ways to climb the Link Ladder than going out of your way to make a Synchro. And to be fair, Ladybug's just chilling out on this leaf, just vibin'. Are you really gonna just disturb him like that? Come on. Naturia Mole Cricket is a level 1 insect monster with 0 attack and defense, and during either player's main phase as a quick effect, you can tribute this card to special summon a Naturia monster from your deck, or if your opponent controls a monster with the highest attack on the field, even if tied, you can special summon 2 instead. 
And if you special summon any number of Naturia monsters from the extra deck, or your opponent special summons any number of any monster from the extra deck while this card is in the grave except during the damage step, you can special summon this card. Wow, this is bonkers, and considering this is one of the new members courtesy of Darkwing Blast, eh, that makes sense. As a quick effect, you can draw out any of your monsters that best fit the situation, or two in a lot of cases, because in general, Naturia aren't exactly known for their raw offensive might. And if the extra deck is utilized, Mole Cricket comes right back so you can do it again. This can set up some really good extra deck plays, or apply any effect onto the board that your opponent's gonna have to contend with. Either way, it's gonna get a big reaction from the person sitting across from you, so that famous cricket sound effect will, funnily enough, not be appropriate. Naturia Mosquito is a level 1 insect monster with 200 attack and 300 defense, and while you control any number of other face-up Naturia monsters, your opponent can't select this card as an attack target. And your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from battles involving a face-up Naturia monster you control, except this card. This makes Mosquito an excellent monster to pair with basically any Naturia board, as you can cost your opponent big life points trying to break it. And if you have a few Naturia that can't be destroyed by a battle, then all the better. But I feel like a Mosquito should drain life points, not reflect damage. I'm telling you, the ludic dissonance here really sucks. Naturia Vein is a level 1 plant tuner monster with 200 attack and 300 defense, and if your opponent activates a spell or trap card as a quick effect, you can tribute this card and one other Naturia monster you control to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. This 2 for 1 could probably see a lot more play if you could use any other zone. Like, tribute this card from your hand and a Naturia you control, or banish it from the grave and tribute a Naturia you control, but this? With those stats, Petite Angel could knock this thing over in its sleep. So you better pair this with something that can draw attacks away from it, cause otherwise, using this card for interruption's sake will be a vain attempt. Naturia Ant Jaws is a level 2 insect monster with 400 attack and 200 defense, and when your opponent special summons any number of monsters, except during the damage step, you can special summon a level 3 or lower Naturia monster from your deck. And that's not once per turn either, so if your opponent goes on a summoning spree, you can match their enthusiasm in kind. And while they can go to the battle phase and trample all over this, that does mean they're going to use their battle phase before they amass a giant army to attack you with, so it's kind of a win-win. Though if you can pair Ant Jaw with a card that redirects attacks or stops them all together, you'll be able to summon all kinds of monsters. Turns out Naturia Vein is a lot more powerful when you can plop it onto the board for free. And the more triggers they give you, the more things are going to be jawful for your opponent. Naturia Beans is a level 2 plant monster with 100 attack and 1200 defense, and once per turn this card can't be destroyed by battle. And when this face-up card is selected as an attack target, inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Oh, um... I guess this is kinda cool. Like, remember Mosquito from earlier? This is a great monster to pair with it, because it'll take two attacks, deal a lot of reflection damage because of its low attack, and deal an extra thousand burn damage on top of it to help move things along. Maybe if Bean number 3 would stop being such a crybaby, we might have gotten at least one more bit of battle destruction immunity, but I guess we can't all be Bean soldiers. Naturia Cosmo Beat is a level 2 plant tuner monster with 1000 attack and 700 defense, and when your opponent normal summons or sets a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. This can do a nice job of giving you a blocker, but is doubly as good if used during your opponent's first turn. This gives you a free tuner on board for you to leverage into synchro plays or what have you, and they can't even remove it without spending an actual effect on it. Also, look how happy that little beat is just by helping out. I love him already. Naturia Eggplant is a level 2 plant monster with 1000 attack and 700 defense, and when this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can select a Naturia monster in your grave, except a copy of itself, and add it to your hand. Now, this is an optional when effect, which means it does miss timing, so you don't get any extra value for using this as part of a synchro or link play. But if it gets sent to the grave in accordance with the timing, then you get to recur one of your many Naturias, and hopefully, the reason they're in there is because they were useful at some point. And now, they'll be useful again. And hey, if that card was particularly annoying, this means you have a good vector to egg on your opponent. Naturia Pineapple is a level 2 plant monster with 100 attack and defense, and all face-up monsters you control are treated as plant type while this card is on the field. 
During your standby phase, if you do not control a face-up Naturia Pineapple and you have no monsters in your grave except plant or beast-type monsters, you can special summon this card from your grave, but you must not control any spell or trap cards to activate and resolve this effect. That's right, we've got another version of Treeborn Frog here, and when this card was announced, people lost their minds. Treeborn Frog had already seen loads of success acting as free tribute fodder for monarchs, and now we were getting one with a type that was much better supported. But on release, it... Uh, flopped. Turns out the best card to fill Treeborn Frog's niche was Treeborn Frog, and any plant synchro deck would realize that Pineapple no longer worked if any off-theme synchros landed in the grave. Heck, it doesn't even work in Naturia, because the restriction of only having plants and beasts in grave is already broken by all the insects we've talked about. Normally, I sing the praises of the TCG exclusive, but Pineapple is basically going on the bottom of that tier list for me. Naturia Sunflower is a level 2 plant monster with 500 attack and 0 defense, and when your opponent's monster effect is activated as a quick effect, you can tribute this card and any other Naturia monster to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. This makes Sunflower a monster effect version of Vayne, and looks a lot less menacing. However, they both still share their crippling weakness to battle, so it'll take some work before this card, Sun, rises to prominence. Naturia Tulip is a level 2 plant tuner monster with 600 attack and 1500 defense, and while you control this face-up card, each time your opponent activates a spell or trap card, all face-up Naturia monsters you control gain 500 attack until the end phase. Ooh, watch out Sky Striker players and Sky Striker players only, because that Naturia board is going to get upwards of 2000 extra attack per monster, before it all falls away during the end phase. This is an interesting way to deter your opponent from activating those kinds of cards, especially trap cards, but with such low base stats, it's hard to recommend using this as a way to solidify your field. So you can kiss your chances of winning in battle goodbye, because they have two lips. Naturia Butterfly is a level 3 insect tuner monster with 500 attack and 1200 defense, and once per turn when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can send the top card of your deck to the grave and negate that attack. This makes for a great pair with something like Ant Jaw, because it effectively stops your opponent from normal summoning and going to the battle phase immediately to out it. The milling is pretty neat, too. It's fitting that the cost for this tuner's effect is similar to the effect of, well, tuning. Naturia Fruit Fly is a level 3 insect monster with 800 attack and 1500 defense, and all face-up monsters your opponent controls lose 300 attack and defense for each Naturia monster you control. And once per turn, you can select a face-up monster your opponent controls with zero defense, and take control of it until the end phase. This is another great option to have when spamming monsters with Ant Jaw, because with a full main monster zone, you can debuff an entire opposing lineup by 1500, not an insignificant amount. The change of heart effect is also pretty neat, but very situational. Even if your extra monster zone has a Naturia in it to make up for the space you'd have to open up to take a monster, anything with 1600 or more defense can't be taken at all, which rules out a lot of powerful end board bosses, not to mention it can't affect any Link monsters. However, the widespread debuff itself is more than worth consideration, because even at 3 monsters, a 900 point debuff can knock monsters out of a whole tier of offensive power, making the playing field a bit more level with our mini monsters. So, for the hard work of pulling off a full board of Naturia, this fly really shows off the fruits of our labor. Naturia Marin is a level 3 plant monster with 1200 attack and 700 defense, and when this card is normal summoned, you can send any Naturia monster from the deck to the grave. And once per turn, you can target two Naturia monsters in your grave, shuffle both targets into the deck, then draw a card. Now, Naturias don't come loaded with a lot of grave synergies, but plants do, so this could set up one of those effects. Or you can just use it as a much more restricted scrap recycler to get your cards back into the deck while giving you a draw. It also might be trying to apologize for sending a card to the grave. Marin has the kinds of eyes a dog has after getting into the pantry and now there's food everywhere. What I can't stay mad at you. Naturia Ragweed is a level 3 plant monster with 1200 attack and 2000 defense, and when your opponent draws any number of cards, except during the draw phase or damage step, you can send this card from the field to the grave to draw two. Wow, that is... that's kind of wild. It doesn't trigger off of searching, which means prosperity is also offline here, but if your opponent plays desires or extravagance, then you can get in on the draw party as well, making this, surprise surprise, another great card to summon off of Ant Jaw. Uh, for medical purposes, of course. Naturia Rock is a level 3 
well, Rock Monster with 1200 attack and defense, and once per chain when a trap card is activated as a quick effect, you can send the top card of your deck to the grave to special summon this card from your hand, and thank goodness this card got a problem solving card text errata in the latest Hidden Arsenal reprint set, cause there's not a single semicolon in that whole darn thing. Anyways, this card is just... fine. I guess. It's got a similar vibe to Cosmo Beat, but at least that was a tuner. This is just a level 3 monster with middling stats that makes for potentially good non-tuner material, but not much else. It's also another card that would have conflicted with Naturia Pineapples. What were the devs thinking? Naturia Rose Whip is a level 3 plant tuner monster with 400 attack and 1700 defense. And while on the field, your opponent can only activate one spell or trap card each turn. Wow, they really did just staple the key part of Great Shogun Sheen's effect onto this, huh? Rose Whip has, very recently, become very well known as one of the funniest tuners you can summon off of Crystron Halka Fibrax's effect, because while you can't activate the effects of the tuners you summon, continuous effects are still fair game. And now you've locked your opponent into very, very limited interactions with you, so they'll have to make the most of that single spell or trap activation. Otherwise, you'll be Rose Whipping them into shape. Naturia Stinkbug is a level 3 insect tuner monster with 200 attack and 500 defense, and when a face-up Naturia monster you control is selected as an attack target as a quick effect, you can send this face-up card you control to the grave to negate that attack and end the battle phase. Okay, remember what I said about Butterfly? This is 10 times better because it just ends the entire battle phase. So if your opponent gives you even a little bit of leeway with Ant Jaw's effect, immediately fast track Stinkbug onto the board and no matter how big their board gets, you'll be able to blank the entire battle phase if it sticks around. And if they summon any monster based removal? Well, just make sure you summon Sunflower as well to give you some negation. No need to cause a huge stink about it. Or actually do do cause a huge stink about it. Naturia Beetle is a level 4 monster with 400 attack and 1800 defense, and you can switch the original attack and defense of this card each time a spell card is activated. It counts both players' activations, and you have no control over it, so, um... I mean, if this thing had a defense in the 2000 range, we'd be talking. But even 1800 is just decent, even back then. It's not even an insect! This is clearly just an acorn with some leaves on it. Naturia Camellia is a level 4 plant tuner monster with 1400 attack and 700 defense. And if this card is normal or special summoned, you can send a Naturia card from your deck to the grave. And if you attribute any number of monsters to activate a Naturia monster's effect, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the grave instead. And if your opponent normal or special summons any number of monsters, except during the damage step, you can special summon a Naturia monster from your grave. This is another new addition to the theme, and once again, it hits it out of the park. The On Summon Foolish effect might seem similar to Marin, but Camellia sends any Naturia card, which can send a Naturia Sacred Tree, which, on top of what it does on field, is a Stratos when sent to the grave by any means. The tribute replacement is also fantastic, but can only be applied once per turn. That's not a downside, uh, just make sure you keep that in mind so you don't think you can use Sunflower infinitely. And Recurring Fallen Naturia is a great way to get just the right toolbox cards you need for any situation. Especially when it comes to our extra deck monsters. And on top of everything else, it's a level 4 tuner, opening up some fantastic synchro lines because, for some reason, we didn't have a level 4 tuner before now. Suffice it to say, this card didn't come here to play, it came Elia to win. Naturia Cliff is a level 4 rock monster with 1500 attack and 1000 defense, and when this card is sent from the field to the grave, you can special summon a level 4 or lower Naturia monster from your deck in face of attack position. Like Eggplant, this also misses timing, which means you can't use this as material or as tribute fodder or to activate the effects of Vein and Sunflower if you want the summon. But it does float into basically anything in the theme, so at least you have variety. Heck, you can even float into Mole Cricket with this, and that's gotta be worth something, right? If you're desperate, you can even just run headfirst into a bigger monster to trigger this. But I don't really have any other info you could use about this card, so this concludes the Cliff Notes portion of this episode. Naturia Dragonfly is a level 4 insect monster with 1200 attack and 400 defense that can't be destroyed by battle with monsters that have 2000 or more attack. And this card gains 200 attack for each Naturia monster in your grave. So with only 4 Naturia in grave, you can make this card effectively immune to battle destruction while in attack position. And the more you dump into the grave, the bigger this gets. I could definitely see a late game Dragonfly pushing 3000 attack all by itself, making it an answer to a lot of big monsters. But 
you know, it is a dragonfly, so big stats kind of come with the territory. Naturia Guardian is a level 4 plant monster with 1600 attack and 400 defense, and when your opponent normal summons a monster, this card gains 300 attack until the end phase. Now, that might seem silly. Ooh, a 1900 attack monster sometimes. Big deal, right? Wrong. Now that we live in a world plagued by the fierce Floanderese, Guardian can swell to an astonishing 25, no, even a 2800 attack value. So as long as it doesn't have to fight M-Pen, you're totally in the clear. Uh, look, it's a more relevant effect than most of the cards in this theme. Cut it some slack. Naturia Horn Needle is a level 4 insect monster with 1800 attack and 100 defense, and when your opponent special summons any number of monsters as a quick effect, you can tribute one other face-up Naturia monster you control to destroy those monsters. This is another nifty card you can use Camilla to cheat the cost for, and it's not a hard once per turn either. While Antjaw can't special summon this one out, Antjaw can summon out Mole Cricket, which is basically every Naturia, so eventually you can get this onto the board to suppress any special summons your opponent makes. It's another way to annoy your opponent, but that's just how the deck goes, so they're just gonna have to deal with you needling them. Naturia Mantis is a level 4 insect monster with 1700 attack and 1500 defense, and when your opponent normal summons a monster, you can send a Naturia monster from your hand to the grave to destroy that monster. Ah, uh, the normal summon counterpart to Horn Needle. However, Mantis doesn't require any other board presence to work. Rather, you just need to have something in hand. And while it doesn't negate the summon, so any on summon effects will still trigger, at least you get the monster off the board, keeping it from being used as material but it knows what it's doing. Look at that little face trying to act coy. This thing's a monster. Uh, morally, that is. Naturia Pumpkin is a level 4 plant monster with 1400 attack and 800 defense, and when this card is normal summoned while your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon a Naturia monster from your hand. This works well with Vein and Sunflower to help make sure you have the extra material for the negate, but is useful with basically any monster in our theme. It enables Mosquito's damage reflection, Horn Needle will have something to tribute for its effect, and we've got a level 6 coming up that now we don't have to worry about tributing for. It's just the right kind of effect to add a little pumpkin spice to your deck. Naturia Spider Fang is a level 4 insect monster with 2100 attack and 400 defense that can't declare an attack unless your opponent has activated a card or effect this turn. Now, normally I'd be against this card, as relying on your opponent to do anything means they're in the driver's seat, and I don't like that. But nowadays, anyone can do just about anything on anyone's turn, so really, if your opponent's in a state where they aren't doing anything, not being able to attack with what amounts to your level 4 Cyber Dragon is a small price to pay. Besides, people are out here running triple tactics talent, and that requires monster effects specifically, so really, for Spider Fang, that's kind of a cakewalk. Naturia Strawberry is a level 4 plant monster with 1600 attack and 1200 defense, and once per turn when your opponent normal or special summons any number of monsters, you target one of those monsters, and this card gains attack equal to that target's level times 100 until the end of this turn. So if they summon a level 4, that makes Strawberry a 2000. Level 8? Now it's 2400. But what I find most funny is that this is mandatory, so your opponent could summon a lower leveled monster just to short you on the attack gain. It's kind of funny, and I believe was a fun card in early Duel Links that could stand up to big normal summons early on, but at this time, it's probably the last straw you'll see. Naturia White Oak is a level 4 plant monster with 1800 attack and 1400 defense, and when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets this card as a quick effect, you can send this card from the field to the grave to special summon two level 4 or lower Naturia monsters from your deck, but they can't declare an attack, also destroy them during the end phase. Now, initially, this card was terrible. It didn't have any other effect, so your opponent had little reason to target this with card effects, unless things had gotten to a point where not doing so would just lose them the game. And if it was during your opponent's turn, you basically ended up with two blockers that couldn't do anything. Basically, the only things worth playing were floaters like Eggplant and Cliff. But now you can tag out for our new monsters, Mole Cricket and Camellia, and I'm sorry to harp on about them over and over again, but they're just that good. Mole Cricket turns into one or more permanent monsters, while Camellia will get that foolish burial that turns into a search and can revive an Aturia. Summons willing, that is. Now, your opponent will still have to actually target this, there's no way around that, but at 1800, this is actually a pretty spiffy attacker. So when paired alongside other threats, well... Maybe your opponent will underestimate you and you win that way. It's kind of a big benefit of playing Rogue, as it turns out. 
Naturia Bamboo Shoot is a level 5 plant monster with 2000 attack and defense, and if this card is tribute summoned by tributing a Naturia monster, while this card remains face up on the field, your opponent can't activate spell or trap cards. This was another card that was expected to change the world and put Naturias on the map when it released. It had a decent stat line, and locked out spells and traps entirely. That just left monster effects, and we have Divine Wrath for that, but... When it turns out you have to play Naturia for this, necessitating that you play some, especially for the time, below average cards, and even the ability to Super she and your opponent wasn't enough to carry this. Now, though, there might be a change in the wind. With Special Summoning being so widespread, and with Camellia able to search this at the drop of a hat, you can keep your normal summon in reserve for when you want to deploy this, and just like that, no more evenly matched, no more lightning storms, and certainly no Dark Ruler no mores. This may not decide every matchup, but for the ones it does, it's really gonna bamboozle them. Naturia Hydrangea is a level 5 plant monster with 1900 attack and 2000 defense, and during your turn, if the effect of a Naturia monster was activated on your field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Just a nice, simple effect that gets a big monster on board to help with your synchro plays. Or, during modern times, basically anything. I'm really glad that it's useful in that regard, but I don't like that I have to look at the Slim Cognito plant. Really skeeves me out. Naturia Stag Beetle is a level 6 insect monster with 2200 attack and 1500 defense, and once per turn during the battle or damage step of this card's attack, when your opponent declares a card or effect, you can select a Naturia monster in your grave and special summon that monster. So if your opponent tries to do anything during the battle phase when this card attacks, you get a free monster. Doesn't seem very good on rate considering it's a tribute monster with those stats. Like, even if you bring this out with Pumpkin, it's highly situational. Also, I feel like something is off here. How does this little bug have the same attack power as a big old forest tiger? Alright, that's all of our main deck monsters, and now it's time to move on to the extra deck, starting with our Synchros. Naturia Beast is a level 5 beast monster with 2200 attack and 1700 defense, requiring an Earth Tuner and one or more non-tuner Earth monsters as material. And when a spell card is activated as a quick effect, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. But this card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. If you don't know much about Naturias, you've still probably seen this card around. If a deck had access to Earth Tuners and Non-Tuners, finding a way to go into this card was a given, as it essentially acts as a spell floodgate. As long as you had two cards to mill, you could keep negating spell cards, because as it turns out, this is not once per turn. It's like the Apex Avian loop for spells. There is that little text about how it has to be face up on the field to resolve the effect, but as it turns out, Book of Moon, one of the best ways to turn a monster face down at quick effect speed, can be checked by Beast. Every so often, this card shows up in the meta and is a complete menace. And I'm convinced that we aren't complaining about it right now like we would some other oppressive negation bodies. Ugh, anti spell fragrance. Ugh, is that Earth just doesn't see its time in the sun very often. But when it does, it's a total beast. Naturia Barkion is a level 6 dragon monster, that's new, with 2500 attack and 1800 defense, requiring an earth tuner and one or more earth non-tuner monsters as material. And during either player's turn when a trap card is activated as a quick effect, you can banish two cards from your grave to negate that activation, and if you do, destroy it. But this card must also be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. Beast will always occupy the top spot when it comes to feared Naturia synchros, but Barkion is isn't very far behind. If you have a stocked graveyard, then no amount of compulsory evacuation devices, or infinite impermanences, or torrential tributes will unseat this mighty creature of the forest. Though, this time, Book of Moon is quite a bit of a problem. Though, it is funny that this card, which is meant to counter trap cards, can't interact with counter trap cards. Naturia Landoise is a level 7 rock monster with 2350 attack and 1600 defense, also requiring an earth tuner and one or more non-tuner earth monsters as material. And when a monster effect is activated as a quick effect, you can send a spell card from your hand to the grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that monster. And this card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. Now, this ought to be the most powerful of the group, since it deals with monster effects. But keeping spells in hands to deal with monster effects just isn't feasible. Heck, your other two synchros didn't even require any real advantage, you just milled or banished from the grave. But not only is Torterra over here asking for a discard, they're asking for a spell specifically. If it was any card, we could at least pitch a monster for some grave synergies, but 
as it stands now, this monster just isn't turtly enough for the Turtle Club. Naturia Leo Drake is a level 9 beast monster with 3000 attack and 1800 defense, requiring an earth tuner and one or more non tuner earth monsters as material. And that's it. It's a non effect monster because that's what you want your 9 levels to go into a Tenyi enabler. So instead of dwelling on that, let me introduce you to something that's more thematically part of the theme rather than mechanically. Leo, the Keeper of the Sacred Tree, is a level 10 beast monster with 3100 attack and 1900 defense, requiring generic material. And your opponent cannot target this card with card effects, except during your main phase too. Very clever dual terminal reference there. But yeah, this card was a haymaker back in the day. If you could sync for this, you were riding high, because you were guaranteed at least one battle phase with this before a tiny window opened up where you could get hit by Phoenix Wing Windblast. And if it survived that, then your opponent's only hope was getting a monster that was bigger than 3100, or apply some kind of non-targeting removal. And in the Legacy of the Valiant days, that wasn't easy to come by. This is also one of the many forms Leo Drake would take over their tenure in the game, but no matter what, Leo here is one cool cat. But we're not just a Synchro deck, we've got some fusions to talk about, because we had to give Miracle Synchro fusions something to do. First is Naturia Exterio, a level 10 beast monster with 2800 attack and 2400 defense, requiring Naturia Beast and Naturia Barkion as material, and their fusion summon can only be conducted with the above fusion material monsters. And a quick refresher, that means you can't use anything that acts as a substitute for a correct fusion material, like Muddy Mud Dragon or King of the Swamp, but anything Anything that takes on their name, like Phantom of Chaos Might, is fair game. When a Spell or Trap card is activated as a quick effect, you can banish a card from your grave, then send the top card of your deck to the grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. And this card must be face up on the field to activate and resolve this effect. This is basically the best of both component fusion monsters. As long as you have a single card in grave to get the process going, you'll be able to negate all the spells and traps you want all while being on a bigger body than either Beast or Barkion. But does this make Exterio a Necroz card? Like, Beast is wearing armor from the skin of a Synchro monster, which is a dead giveaway, and if they aren't a Necroz, you can feel free to try and prove me wrong, after all they aren't a ritual, but then how did this come to pass? There's no Naturia fusion spell that shows how this happened. Naturia Gaiostrio is a level 10 rock monster with 3200 attack and 2100 defense, requiring any two Earth Synchro monsters as material. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that targets one card on the field exactly and no other cards, you can send a card from your hand to the grave to negate the activation, and if you do, destroy that card. So this would make Gaiostrio a combination of Leo and Landoys, which I'm only now just seeing since the limbs all look like giant rocks. And, you know, the typing. The effect is actually pretty good, stopping not just effects that target your cards, but your opponents as well. So if they do anything beneficial, you can have it stopped. And this time, you can discard any card, so you get better synergies, and it's also not once per turn. So as long as you have discard fodder, you've got negation, making this a pretty useful guy Austria. Alright, that's all the extra deck monsters, now it's time for the spells and traps. Barkion's Bark is a normal spell that you can only activate if you control a Naturia monster, and for the rest of the turn, your opponent can't activate trap cards. Wow. Wow, well, given the right matchup, that's absurdly strong. Any trap card-based counterplay is just gone, and you don't even need to Synchro Summon for it. This Bark might actually be worse than its bite. In a similar vein, huh? Eh? Landoise's Luminous Moss is a normal spell card that can only be activated if you control a face of Naturia monster, and your opponent can't activate the effects of their effect monsters that turn. So if you don't want to deal with hand traps or negation bodies or anything like that, this card has you covered. It even stops Grave Effects, something that Dark Ruler No More can't even touch, but this card can be responded to by monster effects, so there's that. Though considering how big Landoise is, you'd think some of its moss would have been large enough to cover that. Leo Drake's Main is a normal spell that selects a face-up Naturia monster you control, and its attack becomes 3000, and its effects are negated until the end phase. So if you absolutely, positively need a Blue-Eyes White Dragon, this card will let you rent that power. And if you've already used the effect of that monster that turn, or it's something that can float like Cliff, the negation doesn't really mean much. After all, you've already exhausted their main purpose. 
Naturia Spring Breeze is a quick play spell that activates one of three effects. Either you special summon any Naturia monster from your hand or grave, perform a synchro summon using monsters you control, including at least one Naturia monster, or perform a fusion summon using monsters you control, using at least one Naturia monster you control. Oh, uh, I guess we did get a fusion spell, though it isn't really showing anything. But yeah, this card is bonkers. It's a quick play monster reborn, or whatever equivalent summons from the hand, and lets you synchro and fuse at quick effect speed. The fusion bit doesn't let you use monsters in your hand, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's basically the only downside. And while our fusion summoning options are slim pickings, our synchro choices are plentiful. At quick effect speed, you can field Black Rose Dragon for a board wipe at a most inconvenient time, make Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity Bane if you have the necessary Dark Dragon Synchro on board, or just get any generic good stuff you can come across during your opponent's turn thanks to Mole Cricket. And failing all that, you get a revival effect, which is pretty cheeky. With utility like this, taking the win is gonna be a breeze. Naturia Force is a field spell, and if you negate the activation of a card your opponent controls, you can add a level 3 or lower Naturia monster from your deck to your hand. Now, we've already seen that plenty of our on-theme monsters have the capability to trigger this, but you can also trigger this with any activation negation, the Solemn Brigade being an excellent example of this. Then you get a free level 3 or lower Naturia off of this, and with the introduction of Mole Cricket, that can turn into any main deck Naturia once you get it on the board. However, it only supplements negation you already have on hand, so it doesn't really do much to advance your game plan. You honestly might be better off playing other field spells, as even Gaia Power gives your monsters a significant power boost, though it does mean you'll be missing the Naturia Forest for the Gaia Trees. And speaking of trees, Naturia Sacred Tree is a continuous trap card, and as mentioned previously, if sent to the grave, adds a Naturia card from your deck to your hand. And once per turn, you can either tribute an Earth Insect Monster to special summon a level 4 or lower Earth Plant Monster from your deck, or tribute an Earth Plant Monster to special summon a level 4 or lower Earth Insect Monster from your deck. It truly is a beautiful cycle of life. The bugs feed on the plants, which one day become the food for the plants, and so on and so forth. Since our theme is mostly made of plants and insects, this is kinda neat, and lets us branch off into different archetypes. For instance, another Earth attribute insect and plant-centered deck is Trap Tricks. But of course, the best part about this is that it turns Camellia into a Stratos, giving you access to most cards in your theme, which is a huge boost in consistency, even if what we're doing is basically the same as the Shadals looking to blow this up in the lore, but you can handle a bit of a heel turn, right? Exterio's Fang is a counter trap card that can only be activated in response to the activation of your opponent's spell or trap card while you control a face-up Naturia monster and have at least one card in hand. You negate the activation, destroy it, then send a card from your hand to the grave. This does a fairly good job of emulating Exterio when you haven't reached it yet, though this one ends up being a 1 for 2 rather than being free negation like the fusion. But hey, once you've gone through all the work of fusion summoning the cat dragon, you do deserve a bit of a discount. Besides, with all the powerful spells and traps floating around nowadays, especially the ones that keep you from responding with monster effects, you'll be able to disprove anyone who says that your archetype doesn't have any teeth to it. Alright, so that's all the Naturia cards, but what do we do with them? Well, the first thing we need to bring to the table is Focus. This theme has a lot of cards, and sadly many of them pull the deck in opposite directions. For instance, uh, Tulip isn't going to be punishing your opponent for activating multiple spells or traps in a single turn if you're locking them out of those with Rose Whip and Bamboo Shoot. So we need to identify which Naturias work with our deck's theming and which don't. And what we should aim to do is, per the strengths of the deck, find the cards that disrupt our opponent most, lean into them as much as possible, then use our newly acquired Amazing Synchro Access to make some of the biggest bosses you've ever seen before swinging in for game. But what can we play to help them out? Well, uh, right off the bat, Verna Sylphs feel like they fit right in. Being able to revive any of our Earth monsters means you get back negation bodies and potentially give our Naturias a wealth of protections via Corolla. And Vera is still an incredible boss monster for any Earth deck, should you be able to summon it. Free special summons and a change of heart and negation? Absolutely worth it. Extra Foolish Burial is another way to send Naturia Sacred Tree to the grave for a free search, but what if you played in conjunction with Camellia? No worries, that search effect is not a hard once per turn. 
Lone Fire Blossom also helps you access all of your plants, including Camellia, which is a huge treat, and Miracle Fertilizer can even bring it back from the grave so you can do it again. This cuts off your normal summon, but once you get the Mole Cricket Engine online, it hardly matters. But now it's time to talk about an even bigger buzzkill than usual, because, as a control deck, we want to make our opponents play as slow as possible, so we've got to use Floodgates, and goes and matches a perfect one for us, well with all the Earths. A lot of our monsters fold to battle immediately, but a quick and easy fix for that is equip spells, and I can't think of a better one for us than Moon Mirror Shield. Slap this onto Ant Jaw, and running over this by battle no longer becomes an option. As for a silly tech pick, try the Dogmatica engine. While our deck is great at reactive removal, Dogmatica is a bit more proactive using Punishment to get rid of monsters on our terms. It can also take a lot of our Earth Synchros from the extra deck and deposit them right into the grave to help with making Exeterio and Gyostrio. One Maximus activation puts Beast and Barkeon into the grave, then once the extra deck becomes opened again, one Miracle Synchro Fusion is all you need to get one of the best Spell and Trap Floodgates ever printed onto the board. And as for an editor's tech pick, why not extend the exterior setup by adding Predaplant Chimera Phalasia to your Dogmatica package? Simply use Nadir Servant to throw Chimera Phalasia onto the compost heap, and when the next standby phase rolls around, its effect will tutor that Miracle Synchro Fusion right into your hand. And while Albolanatus can accomplish pretty much the same thing, Chimera Phalasia is a plant monster, so it won't interfere with Pineapple's grape effect. Not that you'd be playing that alongside spellcasters anyway. And that's all I have to say about Naturia. Will the deck continue to be a joke amongst the tables of competition? Well, that remains to be seen. Like most legacy support, it has to contend with an archetype that was very much a product of its time, and isn't always able to uncover the hidden gem underneath. But I feel like between the almost ubiquitous access Mole Cricket provides, and recontextualization of your effects with Camellia, and the sheer power of Spring Breeze, this deck is only a season or two away from reaching full bloom. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Are Naturia a natural pick for your next deck, or is it best that this dual terminal arsenal remain hidden? Let me know in the comments, and if you haven't already, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to show your support, ring that bell so you don't miss an episode, and share this video with someone you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. Today's episode was sponsored by my lovely patrons, including Quasar Commander Harry, the Ominous Benefactor, Special Contributor Gibbles the Gibble, Nebula Navigators Third Dynasty, Adam Zagdell, Ashling Waltz, Avi Chali, Benjamin Meisner, Kane Senpai, Cameron Berg, Eric, Frankie, Genesis Yu-Gi-Oh, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Howling Zangetsu, Ironic, John Manji, Julius Sneezer, Larakia, Meteornis, Michael Madsen, Mighty Action X, Muziki Clark, Neo Trinity, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Rem T. Bright, RJ the Jank Monarch, Ruxith Sarani, Sophie, apparently, The Fresh Prince of Conair, The Wizard Moose, True Neutral, Tyler Cranston, Xander Wolfensberger, and Zyrus, Cosmic Crusaders, Bear Sharktopus Studios, Chaz Ghost, Corbinisms, Emony, Eva Padilla, Inblink, Jesus Garcia, KL, Kale the Dragon, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lord Whoop De Doo, Manga Pages, Marion James E. Picotta, Nitromo, RGS, Shooting Star 3300, Star Lord 777, and the Legendary Raven, as well as the wonderful Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. I'm only able to continue doing this thanks to the support of these lovely people, so if you'd like to be a part of these credits, as well as help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, please check out my YouTube membership or Patreon links in the description to see if I have anything you'd like on offer. And if you'd like to see another video about a theme that just loves Earth monsters, check out this video I did covering Vernisylphs, or Vernalizers as they were called at the time. And if you want to see two Yugi tubers going at it, check out Noah Jenk and I's latest series, Progression Polls, where your voice shapes the format. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.